That's a lot of. Holy crap! <laughs> Be like Tigger. <laughs> the wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are wonderful thing. Is the tops made out of rubber. Sorry. Oh, that's bad. Right there. Oh. All right. Okay. 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 Uh -huh. Done. Done. Ooh, that was it. Mm -hmm. I got you. Ooh, nice. How many years have you worked as a dental assistant? About five. Okay. And what's going on? So some neck and shoulder mm -hmm. pain here? Yes. About I feel like it's the pain that radiates from my neck down into my shoulder blade. Like I feel like it's behind the blade and mm -hmm. I just can't get to it. Nobody can get to it. Mm -hmm. And I just have kind of like lived with it. When did you think it started? So five years ago? Mm -hmm. so you feel like it yeah. started kind of like right at the beginning when you started? Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so pretty obvious. I mean, it, Give me an idea of like if you had to emulate the position you're in most of your day. What so you basically, like we're si I'm sitting like that in in the assisting chair, and then I'm like this mm -hmm. over the patient, retracting and suctioning. So and always that angle. You're never mm -hmm. doing the other side. Right. Right. It's it's you know the specifically when you're in this kind of position, this area is going to get swollen. Mm -hmm. It's it's also being more like this side is becoming more stable. These right. joints are coming together. And these joints. Are separating, so mm -hmm. now the muscles have to work much harder. Yeah. At the end of the day, you know, like I said, I, I tell people all the time, I don't mind if you beat yourself up and get paid for it. It's our job; we have to try to make it work. Right. Right. It's when we do things extracurricular that I go, you know, why? I have friends that do off-road dirt track racing with, on, you know, and they right. dislocate their shoulders, and I'm like, I got to be able to work on mm -hmm. Monday. I, I, how do we? You know, or you know, I'm not a big fan of golf, but you know, right, asymmetrical yes. rotations over and over again. Right. You know, at least get paid for it. So, uh, let me see here. Headaches. How often do you have headaches? Um, I I used to get them a lot, like at least one, and they're more so migraines. At least once a month, um, and they would last for maybe three days or so. Okay. Um, but I, when I so when I started to go to a chiropractor, they actually decreased a lot, mm -hmm. a lot more. So um, I don't get them too, too frequently okay. anymore, but. It's tension or what we call suboccipital headaches mm -hmm. come from yep. the position you're in. So the yeah. suboccipital nerves can interact with the trigeminal nerve, which actually gives you pain on your face. So they call it the trigeminothalamic tract. And so inflammation mm -hmm. of the suboccipital irritates that tract, gives you pain on your face. The more forward your head goes, the more constant tension, inflammation. Yes, it normally goes from right there all the way to my, my left eye. Okay. Yeah, it's that, again, this whole left side of your neck yep. is getting more swollen yeah. because of that position you're stuck mm -hmm. in. Is there numbness right now? Is it, is it, um, no, not right now. Um, it'll come and go. It's weird. Where have you felt the So normally from? it'll go down into my thumbs okay. is where I'll feel more it. the right arm? Uh, yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. that started similar five yeah, years similar. ago? Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. And you've been to a chiropractor. Has anybody mm -hmm. won in, in imaging of your neck has been taken? Yes. X-rays or MRIs would mm -hmm. have been taken? X-rays. Just X-rays? Yeah. Okay. And you're in your 20s, and so I'm not a huge fan of you know, X-raying 20-year-olds because the main structure that mm -hmm. is valuable in our spine that determines that symptom that you just described of hand numbness is these discs. Mm -hmm. So have little holes with wires going through them and I'm going to use this area just because it's a little bit bigger but it's specifically the lower neck ones that are the ones that are causing that numbness in your hand mm -hmm. this disc supports open the hole the nerve passes through and so as that disc you know either the disc starts to bulge out and hit the nerve or it becomes dehydrated that space well at 29 years old it's most likely not going to be stenosis yet it's just the bulging discs that are happening in your lower neck mm -hmm. and we can't see a bulging disc on x-ray and so it it's very disheartening because it's like, well, my x-ray didn't look too bad. They said their alignment wasn't great, but I don't have any disc height loss. Right. You actually will have a, swole, a disc when it's swollen. The space will look really good on x-ray before mm -hmm. it herniates out, and we're missing it on x-ray. Mm -hmm. And so at your age, I would really only take MRI as a way of, you mm -hmm. know, to see it. Now, when I started my practice 17, 18 years ago, MRIs were, you know, $1,000, and so it didn't make as much sense. Now they're at 250 300 and so you mm -hmm. can get a much better I don't need to treat you today, but that's what we would use to show you what's going on. An x-ray uh, just shows the bones, but we're missing information on the cartilage. Okay. And it's the cartilage, it's the soft tissue that's causing that symptom. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not like you had a 
fall off a ladder or something like that and dislocated a bone. It's just simply inflammation and soft tissue, disc injury, specifically causing that hand symptom. Right. Um, and then the local pain, the actual joints in your lower neck, when they're inflamed, they'll give you pain mm -hmm. along this border. We call it referral pain. And so mm -hmm. this coupled with also attachments in your upper shoulders so that they all kind of rhyme and roll together is as the head goes forward, the attachments lift up, the joints get inflamed, you get the interscapular pain, mm -hmm. you get disc involvement mm -hmm. <laughs> happening, giving us symptoms down the arm. Mm -hmm. And so two things we're going to do today to help you. We're going to get your upper neck, the main engine of your spine, which is your upper cervical. Your skull sits on this atlas, which sits on a pin called the dens. And these, the upper neck complex up here is supposed to be your main engine, the main mover of your neck, and your lower neck should be your backup engine. And so this area must be underworking to allow this to be overworking. The cervical curve in your neck that needs to be there to allow the weight to be evenly spread, it goes mm -hmm. reversed or straight, and then that sends all the work down to your lower neck. Right. So we're going to loosen up your upper neck and at the end of the visit see how well we can try to restore some curve. At the end of the day, rest of your life, we're going to be doing some counter stretching right. to undo the, how many, you know, a typical shift is what, eight, ten hours or how long are you typically? Yeah, eight? about eight. So we, so the question shouldn't be, Dr. Ed, why do I need to do 20 minutes of stretching at the end of the day? The question should be, how Dr. Ed could 20 minutes possibly undo eight hours of bending forward, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's um, and the answer is because we're going to ask you to go as, as far back as you can, and hopefully mm -hmm. in your day you're not as far forward as you could be. Right. And we're not in extreme flexion, we're in mild flexion, and so we're going to have you arch back as far as you can to undo that. To do it safely, we got to make sure your whole spine's working as a team. Otherwise, I would just sell stretches and keep you on your way. Right. <laughs> we <laughs> want to first make sure that when we stretch, you have an even participation. That's where we're going through the whole spine. Everybody at home sees us be working on. I look at the areas that are not injured, the upper back, the middle back. These areas typically are tighter mm -hmm. and they're not functioning, which then lends that these lower neck and lower back areas to overwork. So mm -hmm. I kind of work on inverted in that sense that everybody focuses on the injured areas. I focus on the uninjured. Oh, yeah. Okay, left shoulders a little. I mean, you busted that clavicle at all if you ever injured that no, clavicle? No, but also it's funny you say that too because I feel like sometimes I just want to bring it It down. is really, I mean, like this. I feel like it. Like if I, I'm exaggerating, but it's almost like your, this shoulder is more midline compared to your right shoulder. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll work on that, maybe that contraction, yeah. maybe that position you're in mm -hmm. where you're rolling, that yes. left shoulder rolling exactly. forward, and that right shoulder's more back. Mm -hmm. So we'll work on that left pec a little bit. All right. I'm also a self-cracker. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, and I understand the desire. Right. Right, so you, you there's, for everybody wondering what that is, is when you, the joint capsule is a, is a pressurized capsule mm -hmm. and air bubbles from our blood will diffuse into that capsule and you can, you know, pop your neck and it releases that pressure and you go, ah, and then the pressure builds up 10, 15 minutes later and you yeah. can do it again. Yeah. And so the, the, the reason why I'm not a fan of self-popping and not just because I'm a chiropractor, it's my job, it's because you're only mainly going to pop the loosest bones. Right. And so you create a larger contrast between the parts of your spine that are moving and the ones that aren't because the loosest vertebrae are gonna move the most and the stiffest ones won't move very much at all. And so you're increasing the contrast between those two areas. Mm -hmm. When you repetitively use a muscle, it grows. And in the same way, when you repetitively stress a joint, it will grow bigger. A muscle getting bigger, everybody high fives you in America, but when a joint grows, we call it a disease. Mm -hmm. We say it's a degenerative joint disease. And so mm -hmm. they're not disease processes for a joint to grow, but repetitive stress, bone spurs will grow then they hit nerves and okay. everybody calls that that. So if you keep popping the same segments mm -hmm. over time, the joints will get bigger. And that's what the x-ray at 45 would show. Look, you got these bone spurs in your lower neck. Kind of can, as best I can, I love these x -rays to kind of, maybe you've seen something similar to this, but these are the ones that I like to show. I'm not sure, Carl, how well these come up on here. This is a, this is a, 55 year old lady, early 50 year old lady, mm -hmm. and her upper neck. If I took her teeth out, and you, <laughs> if I just showed you her upper neck, I'd say I'm looking at a 20 year old. Right? These two discs here, these are the disc spaces in her upper neck. Yeah. They haven't changed since she was 18 years old. Mm -hmm. There's no bone spurring up here. Okay? And I show you her lower wow. neck, and you go, uh oh, wow. how, did, how did that space get all narrow? Right? It's about half or a third of the size. Mm -hmm. And then all this. 
right? So no bone spurring. Look at all these, you know, big bone spurs here, and then no bone. How do, so she's only bending primarily here. Her neck pivots exclusively here, and then this is, gives you that referral pain, and mm -hmm. so the destruction of the lower neck. But it's actually, we call it wasting. It grows a waist and then fills in. It grows a waist and fills in. That's how the bones actually widen. This is not a disease. I, our world calls this a disease process. I mean, you know, this is what they do. <laughs> they do this. Right, so, oh. so we put, uh, we fuse it, right? ACDF, anterior cervical discectomy infusion. They put a rod, they drill screws in, and they hold it open. And this is five years post-op on this 44-year-old lady. Big bone spur now right above, right? Because now her neck bends here. Right. And they want to add that to the, and then she'll have this one, and then you up and down your spine, keep fusing everything mm -hmm. until there's nothing left to fuse. The answer isn't to go in there and scrape off the bone spurs. The answer is to restore the function of your main engine up here. Mm -hmm. Atlas, axis, these top two bones, take the stress mm -hmm. off. And then notice in both those, there's not much curve in the neck, when in fact there's supposed to be this curve mm -hmm. in the spine. And that mm -hmm. curve allows the weight to be spread right. over all the segments. And so, that's what the denerol, we put the denerol in mm -hmm. here and we work on that arch and that takes the weight off the front where the discs are always compressed because of that forward rotation. Mm -hmm. okay. I got your head back for me. Exhale. Deep breath in, I got you two more. Head back, exhale. Deep breath in, one more. Let it all go. There you go. Okay. Just gonna go gentle. Hands in your belly for me. All right, take a deep breath in, twist, and then exhale for me. Exhale. Other side for me, very nice. So, what, what are you doing here? What, what's the purpose of this? Like, what, what, what are you, we're just making fun, cracking some. I'm checking this joint called your sacroiliac yeah. joint, okay? This joint here never has surgery, all surgery happens here. This joint stiffens up when we sit. Mm -hmm. And so, the lack of function of this joint, perpetuated by eight, 10 hours of sitting, if this joint locks, this lower back is going to age at a faster rate. The more we can keep your middle back and your SI joint functioning, the slower your lower back is going to age. Mm -hmm. That's the whole purpose of it. And so right. if it's functioning, I don't need, we don't have to keep adjusting it, but if it's, if it's stiff in there, we're going to go in there and work mm -hmm. it and get the joint functioning like every joint in your body. They're designed to move. Take a deep breath in. Exhale. There you go. Face that point. Very nice. So those, those two aspects are important. Does the joint move? And then how much resistance, how difficult? So it might move and go, well, aren't you happy? Ed? Well, no, because I had to push too hard to get it to function. Okay. I had to, it's like, sometimes I tease my kids, you know, I want them to do their chores without me having to tell them, right? right. It's like, I want the joint working without me having to mm -hmm. observe it all the time. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm looking for, okay. He's got a lot of tension up here, mm -hmm. just just immense. Mm -hmm. So this is why I like working on people laying down because it takes gravity, takes posture out of the equation, right? Mm -hmm. So injuries or guarding are the main reason why things can stay tight while you're on your back. And this right side of your neck has an immense <laughs> amount of tightness over here. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're gonna be spending something some rough. I got you. Just trying to loosen this up a little bit. Real gentle. I got you. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm just like, no, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> make it a great reaction. No, I'm just <laughs> I need you to cry now. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was just the best. <laughs> yeah, so, just asking the joints to function how they're designed to function. We're just cleaning yeah. them out a little bit here. This one I'm excited for. I got your head, I got you. Oh, relax right here. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. That's the ticket. That's it. Okay. <laughs> have you had cupping done or gua sha done before? I have not. Okay, so that'll be right. I'm excited for that too. Yeah, it's good. They figured out a long time ago how to increase circulation, yeah. nutrients in, waste out. It's really how the body heals. Mm -hmm. We call it healing, but it's really replacement. Your body 
different tissue replaces at different rates and we call that healing here. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so somebody might say, well, I don't, I don't feel like I'm healing. It's like, well, you're always replacing. Well, mm -hmm. Just you might be damaging yourself faster than you can replace. And some right. tissue never replaces your mm -hmm. heart cells, your brain cells, right? right? Really so important. your enamel on your teeth, right? right? You, don't, <laughs> yeah, right. You, don't, you don't make new enamel. And so it's a and discs in the spine. And so we, to me, the education we should have had at a young age is to be told, hey, look, certain structures don't replace. So take care mm -hmm. of the the one set that you get, right? Um, you know, just like you know about the, you know, if you crack a tooth, that tooth's not going to uncrack itself, mm -hmm. right? Or if you chip a tooth, the tooth's not going to regrow and, you know, make the tooth that, you know, mm -hmm. cracked off. It's not going to regenerate, right? It's not going to heal. And so you get two sets of teeth and alligators get unlimited. I don't know why. <laughs> I don't know why. Sharks have lots of rows and rows, but mm -hmm. humans, two sets. Two sets I don't, I don't know. know, I don't know. I've got questions. <laughs> it's like Radio Shack. <laughs> You've got questions? I don't have answers. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't have answers to these <laughs> questions. group of chiropractors called upper cervical chiropractors that would almost spend their entire visit just on these top two bones and mm. I, I don't completely agree with them but I I understand what right. they're getting at which is that if these top two bones aren't working we're in trouble right. and so there's a disproportionate amount of importance that is placed on these two upper cervical vertebrae to making sure that they're working properly they're worth more in terms of their power and strength and, and ability to take stress off of the other parts mm -hmm. Okay? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You were just getting it there. Yeah. Keep working on it. Push these ribs down, this first rib here. My wife had just told me not to try to talk too much. <laughs> Stop talking so much. Just try to, try to keep it concise. Ed. Okay, I'm sorry. I just I like to goof around. I'm sorry. I just, You're self aware. I just like to. <laughs> Wants to go to the car. How you doing today? Right, How right. Your spine, okay. Yeah. Let me adjust this bone. <laughs> click, click, click. Have a nice day. <laughs> Snuffleupagus is a chiropractor. <laughs> Hi, bird. <laughs> uh, too much sesame street. Feel like it's just cement there. Yeah. This is the channel the nerves have to pass through to get to your shoulder. So all okay. the nerves that travel through here to get to your hand. Mm -hmm. It's called a thoracic outlet. And so we're trying to open up this funnel, this channel. It's already yeah. it's already an anatomical funnel. And then mm -hmm. it, we life and injuries and posture make it much more narrower than it has to be. And mm -hmm. so we can open it up a little bit, but end of the day it's still a funnel. It's still a channel. And it needs to be a, we need to be aware of it and try to do what we can to keep it open. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Yeah, so behind that wall, oh boy. Try to open that up a little bit. All right. Yeah, there shouldn't be any soreness. No. You know, oh boy. Yeah. Yeah. yeah been there a while. Yeah, this one's sore over here, but the left side is like rock mm. hard and it, like a numb feeling. Mm. Yeah, just abuse in the old lower neck. Been, this is the area right below the lower neck that's stiff, tight. Mm -hmm. You gotta aim your neck back to this curved position. This is where we're gonna hang out. Mark of the, I would call the congestion. It's right. A, there's congestion in here, tightness in here. It's like a motor that gets clogged. Yeah. The oil, the oil needs to be changed. Just a little comb with a smooth edge. Yeah. 
Yeah. And it if blood flow. Yeah. Blood flow. Just okay. Open, brings uh, blood in, and then when there's something present in the tissue that doesn't belong there, it comes out as a mark. I can't create okay. a mark if there's nothing inside. Right. You'll usually, you know, something's sore in there, and something's trapped. I can mm -hmm. feel it. It's very tender. Yeah. And then that's usually where the mark comes out at the same time. And right there in our upper neck. Yeah. If this wasn't clogged, your symptoms would be confusing, right? Mm -hmm. It'd be like, how did you overstress your lower neck if the upper neck was working? To me, it right. wouldn't even be possible. This has to be frozen to mm -hmm. allow the lower neck to be in, is sending out distress calls, SOS, help. Yeah. <laughs> Would somebody please put me on vacation? <laughs> <laughs> right, it's, it's just, and, and kind of rightfully so, it's upset that you have an area that wasn't designed to do everything, doing everything, right. and it's kind of, it's not your fault. Our world really doesn't give us any guidance in healthcare, so mm -hmm. don't, don't feel bad. I grew up with a chiropractor as a father, so I, <laughs> I cheated. Okay, so I, right. I had a father that guided me my whole life. Mm -hmm. I'm going to roll this up a little bit here. Not fun, huh? No. Oh, I'm sorry. Has to be done. do this mainly at the end of the visit when we're stretching our back I'm going to have your arms to the side and above yeah. your head and you can accomplish a lot of this just by stretching at the end of the day and I do I do think sometimes going in here and working on this can help speed that up but uh -huh. at the end of the day we really have to stretch our shoulders back right um, this AC joint here is going to get pretty mad I know I wasn't even thinking about over here. I know, I know. It was pretty obvious when I saw your posture that oh, this, this shoulder's rounded forward. Yeah. So I just want to get this shoulder opened up a little bit. Ooh. I know, I know, I know. Crunch. Yeah. Oh, yeah, like I said, at the end of the day, we're going to be you know, doing stuff like this, mm -hmm. working on stretching our shoulders. Yeah. You work on all these angles, mm -hmm. and I'll show you at the end of the visit how to stretch that back and yeah. maybe sit for me if you can. I try to have people do this all the time. Like, you need this. Yeah. The rest <laughs> of your life is pushing yeah. that mm -hmm. down. Yeah. And it's like I feel nothing. I understand. Because okay. it's like right. So spasmed for yeah. so long. Yeah. Way too young to have this much. Mm -hmm. <laughs> got a long way to go in life, and so we got a long yeah. journey to make this. One thing I now this is a fifty-something-year-old dental hygienist I was working on. And, you know, throughout her day, I told her, you know, if you can have little breaks in the day where you can lay down and stretch, and that changed her life. Mm -hmm. it was just she, she, still working, you know, eight hours, but just little five, ten-minute breaks in between where I right. told her, I said, you have to lay down, counter stretch. Yeah. Get your body ready for the next patient. You can't just be going patient to patient to patient mm -hmm. without any food for your stomach. Kind of right. You have to feed your spine. Mm -hmm. um, that will become more crucial into your 40s to me. Right now, it's really just cleaning things up. But if you're going to do this for a long period of time, it's. I didn't have to do this at 28. I understand. <laughs> right. The plan's going to change later, where we're going to need more care. You know, things that you can do uh, in between patients to keep these areas clean. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, right there. Wow. Okay. Oh,
this thoracolumbar junction here. This is lumbar one, T12 right here. This mm -hmm. area is, when we're young, the first part of our spine that works. Mm -hmm. And so all the oldest injuries are harbored in here because mm -hmm. when we're young, this is the first guy that shows up to work. And so it's mm -hmm. the first guy that gets punched in the face. <laughs> and so to me, the, all the oldest traumas. Mm -hmm. And then this area shuts down and then the lower back gets beat up. Mm -hmm. 10 years later, but lumbar one, T12, this wishy-washy Charlie Brown part of the back, <laughs> doesn't know what he wants to be. Mm -hmm. Is it a lumbar vertebrae? Is it a thoracic vertebrae? Well, that's both. It's a hybrid. It's a Prius. <laughs> <laughs> right here. All right. I know. I'm sorry. That's pretty sore. Crazy how much more sensitive this site is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we've got to work on it until Ed. Is that all you got? <laughs> Could you push any harder, Ed? I feel like you're goofing around back. Right. That's that's what we're going. I don't feel like you are. <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. All right, all right. Wow. Just looks so much nicer on the video. Oh, oh. <laughs> He's pushing much harder than it looks. <laughs> said about your x-rays I mean, they, did they say anything other than just the alignment did they oh yeah they definitely said my neck was like completely straight right but they, they didn't say no anything curve. more than that right a, right that's all you can really tell at 28 years old right <laughs> right on x-ray but the symptom of hand going tingly mm -hmm. is a disc and it's completely missed mm -hmm. and I'm so sorry <laughs> I'm so sorry <laughs> that the same year chiropractic started 1895 is the same year Redken x-ray his wife's hand and the x-ray machine was invented mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so we were like born the same year mm -hmm. twins conjoined twins and i've been trying to separate us <laughs> chiropractic from x-ray machines but everybody's so well don't you have an x-ray like, no i have an mri right <laughs> mris are 50 years old not 130 years old mm -hmm. you know, um, and so much of what causes symptoms is in the soft tissue that we can't even see it all on x-ray right missing these components. on the corner of a wall. Yes, I'm sure you can tell I you. I literally just like, put please. Yep, rock back and forth on it. This elevates. The more forward your head goes, the more this just hikes up. And mm. that's what I'm saying. I'm prepping you to try to show you how to stretch at the end of this. Right. Minute. My sister makes this really cool roller called the McCracken Roller. It. We're going to use that today a little bit. And it gets in between your shoulder blades. Yeah. And you kind of can roll around. And we'll go between that and the neck down and roll over here way to counter stretch and it's like like I said it just says like a piece of floss you know right. toothbrush you can get right. in here and floss this area I like love the, all the dental analogies yeah yeah it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it, like I said the, <laughs> my blood brother dentist <laughs> there's a black sheet like I love the, you ever see wild hogs with Tim yes, Allen yes. right Tim Allen's a dentist yeah. right and John Travolta wants Tim Allen to go on a road trip on the motorcycle, uh -huh. and then Tim Allen's like, "I can't, I can't just up and leave. I'm, I'm a doctor. I have patients." <laughs> and then what, what does John Travolta say? "You're not a doctor. You're a dentist, <laughs> right? Right? You're not a doctor. You're a chiropractor." Oh! <laughs> right, right. So you guys are like the black sheep, like I right, am. Like, right. <laughs> <laughs> you're not really a doctor. I mean, you, you technically are, but. Terrible. <laughs> it is. Right, but that's that's the prevailing. Yes. He's not a 
doctor, you're a dentist. Right. Mm-hmm. Even though you guys are technically MDs. Uh huh. But mm-hmm. <laughs> I at least I'm, I'm a DC doctor. Yeah. <laughs> Separate building. <laughs> Sorry. Let it go, man. <laughs> Just let, let it go. It go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> Tigger. <laughs> the wonderful thing about Tiggers is Tiggers are one of the things. The tops made out of rubber. Sorry. Laughing in the pain. Sorry. Not very funny yet. You make fun of her. She's in pain and you're just laughing. Such a jerk. Okay. Is that what they'll say? Uh, probably. Yeah. Somebody will. <laughs> I can't believe it. Fortunately, I've been working on my dad very, very hard, and so people are like, you know, I'm sure if you know what this feels like. Believe me, I do. Yeah. <laughs> my dad has given, shown me no mercy, and so everything I do, I've had done to myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I got you. I got you. Easy, easy. I'm sorry. Pretty bad. You okay? Um, it's okay. You okay. All right. All right. We're done. We're done. I know. I know. Why? Uh, just trying to get underneath this scapula a little yeah, bit. Yeah, this is the... of our neck. Mm-hmm. These are the tree roots that lift up when our head goes forward right here. The, these need to be pushed back down like tent pegs. Mm-hmm. I got you. Yeah, yeah. That's lovely, Ed. Hi. Yeah. Sorry. Just get a little bit of blood there. Go crazy. Just get some. How red is it? Um, not the craziest, but definitely it's it's turning red. Yeah, definitely needed a cleaning. Cupping is in the same category. There's another way to increase circulation. You just put the cups on, set uh-huh. them at maximum setting, about 10 minutes. I find this to be a little more effective because it gets everything. The cup pulls just where the cup's located. Right. You kind of miss, unless you overlap them and then take them off and reset them and, or move them around while you're doing it. Uh-huh. I, I find this to be more... Uh, complete in its care, but uh, it's not bad treatment. Yeah. Do cupping. Yeah, okay, all right. Included in part of your uh, <laughs> salary. <laughs> I know, right? Should be included as part of your uh, maintenance program for right. your own body, so you can keep performing. I mean, mm-hmm. I know I'm not at my best when I'm hurting. You know, mm-hmm. so when you're hurting, nothing's worse than trying to right. get through a shift while you're suffering. It's like you just—I mm-hmm. love those commercials where it's like you know, you're not you when you're hungry. And, Robin Williams is like screaming and then he eats a Snickers and turns into a totally different person, you know. <laughs> yes. Like, you know, you're not you when you're in pain. Right. You're not you when you have sciatica or <laughs> radiculitis or
Any bushes here? Just gonna... uh, Let's see if I missed any. Oh no. <laughs> oh, oh yes. <laughs> Sitting rock says joint like I said yeah. earlier. I know, God. You can't let this tissue be so sore. The sciatic nerve has to travel through here and so if all this tissue is so inflamed. Mm -hmm. It's like Yeah. You're set up for having radiating pain down your leg because the nerve is so chemically irritated by the mm -hmm. environment it's sitting in as it travels down your leg. Your sciatic nerve is as big as your thumb. Wow, that's pretty huge. Largest peripheral nerve. Wow. Yeah. Huge. I mean, I remember in Cadaver Lab, you take glute max off and it's like right there. It's like wow. It's, it's not deep, really. The one, you just glute max off yeah. and there's the nerve sitting right there. 75% of the neurology of your leg is one nerve. Wow. Made up of five nerve roots, L4 through S3, right? So it's it's... It's critical that this channel here is, I know, I know, it's oh. not. Yeah, and so I'm the first bad guy to go in here and start, okay, yeah. Yeah. let's try to clean this out a little bit. Oh, right there, almost done, almost done, I know. 10 more seconds, come on, hang in there with me. Oh, that's bad, <laughs> right there. Oh. All right, okay, 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 <laughs> done, done. <laughs> it's, it's so swollen. Yeah. Be squeezed out the fluid. You have to like hold pressure like this. Mm -hmm. you know, we're going to use your just laying on your back with my sister's roller and just put it like right here mm -hmm. and hold pressure and then approximate the joint, bring it closer to home. Mm -hmm. And then uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, mm. Ooh, that was it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, this needs to be held. You got to hold this. It just It's like carpet cleaning. You have to mm -hmm. <laughs> adjust, then stretch, then massage, then adjust again, stretch. You know, because you make mm -hmm. cycles of putting soap and water and scrubbing, and then suck it up, and then until there's no soreness in here, you gotta get rid of all this mm -hmm. soft tissue soreness. I'm learning you. I'm learning you. You got way too much tension in here. Yeah. Way too much resistance. Uh, weight belongs on our heels. Oh, man. Yeah, way too much weight on your toes. These joints are jammed. It's just the opening that up like the, the ankle? talus, yeah, the talus and the wow. tibia, that joint in between there, just opening that up a little bit, get some blood flow in there. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and tilt left. Wow. Yeah, that's your back. Yeah. Those attachments are in there. All that 
Jesus. Wow. And then look up for me a little bit. Now press back with your elbow into mine. Keep pressing back, keep pressing back. There you go. Oh. I mean, we can try to, you know, your arm placement's really at your tolerance. See what you can handle. You try to bring the arms above your head. You know, see what you can handle. If you can't handle it, put the arms back down. Feels good. You know, but this is what, this is really going to be the rest of your life. As this increases, the tension you feel. See what happens. What, what are we doing by adjustment? We're trying to close the joint, right? So when, I'm, when you're laying face down, like what are you what are you doing? We're trying to get the joint closed. Now, why do we want to do that? Because the more the joint is closed, the less, less weight's on the disc. So the more weight goes on the disc, the more the joint separates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those joints are so swollen that we can't compress them, right? That's why we have to squeeze out the fluid, and then they can be adjusted. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. And that's where, again, like I say earlier, we have to stretch and squeeze that fluid out and then we adjust it. And then over a period of visits, we'd actually get that joint to be fully compressed, the posture being upright, the hump in your upper back reduced. Right. It's cycles of that. To put it as simply as possible, it's the tucking of the chin. That is the most egregious, that's what's doing it. Yes. If you if you could do your, I don't know if you can, I don't know, if you can do your work without tucking <laughs> as much, you understand? Know like if, you if you can work like this yeah. versus like this. Yeah. Or, Anything to keep this chin up, even if you have to be forwardly rotated, will reduce it. It's not going to eliminate it, but it will. It's the tucking of the chin that just pulls right yeah. here, and we have to try to be aware of it. We have to counter stretch. Yeah. We weren't meant to be spending this much time forwardly rotated. For your neck, there's this guy. Head back for me. I got you. This is designed for your upper neck, and we kind of take your hand and we'll place it in your forehead, and we try to push your head in. Mm. And then you put your hand back down and just take a nap. I like this. And this is the neck general. So this is, they both need to work together. So the effectiveness of this increases as your upper back goes in. And then the, as your upper back goes in, you know, they both, they both work together to accomplish the goal of your ear being over your shoulder. Right? So our, from the side, our ear hole belongs over the center of our acromion. And so the more forward our head goes, the more constant stress. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's not just about bringing the head back. We have to bring the chest in. Right. Call, we call it coupled motion. So get upper back in, head back. Mm -hmm. That's how we're doing it. Yeah, now I'm able to do this, and there's no crunching noises coming from it. <laughs> Cleaned her all out. Yeah. So, so glad you came in. Thank Appreciate you. it. Thank you.